Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning, and welcome back for another Sunday morning of Faith in Our Hometown. We're glad that you've joined us for another we uh, one of our weekly conversations about issues of faith that concern us uh, of people of faith uh, uh, from the greater Joplin area. So we're glad you joined us for another Sunday morning. Um, you know, through my many years of ministry, uh, and especially all my years on campus, I've always told people that, that half of campus ministry is creative loitering or loitering with intent. And that is the way that a lot of ministry gets done because, you know, you sometimes you never figure out, okay, I'm going to go do ministry here and at this spot at this moment. Sometimes you're just in a spot when the ministry kind of breaks out among you. My guest this morning is going to be David Dural, who uh, has learned how to do that on the basketball court and has begun kind of a, a ministry of presence uh, playing basketball here in the greater Joplin area with some of our youth. And so I'll be back to talk to David about that in a minute and about how that ministry goes and how that's unfolded for him. So grab a cup of coffee. Uh, uh, settle in and we'll be right back after this Mercy Min Minute. It was silly to be so um, uh, dreading it so much because uh, it was really no big deal. There was no pain afterwards. Um, I was really, really hungry, so I got to have whatever I wanted to have for, for lunch. Um, but, you know, the rest of the day I just slept and, and there was no pain. And, went to work the next day. Every day that I opened up my refrigerator and saw that ref that referral on my refrigerator, I just dreaded having to go through it. And, and now I just kind of laugh about it because it just, it was no big deal. And knowing it's behind me, I just don't have to worry about it. Well, my husband and I, we do a lot of riding and we kind of cram everything into the weekends. But uh, eventually, um, you know, we, we'd like to, once we retire, we want to be able to go um, uh, on vacations on our bikes and and, and go, go riding on weekends a lot more. So we have a lot to look forward to. Well, again, good morning, and we're glad you're with us. Uh, my guest this morning, David Dural. Uh, David, I was talking before the break about a ministry of presence. So tell our audience a little bit about yourself and about how you got started in this ministry of presence on a basketball court. Sure. Um, well, my name is David Dural. Um, from here in Joplin. Um, my best friend and I, Susan Doss, started Unity in the Community about four years ago. Um, there was a need for it at Cunningham Park. I was up there playing basketball with, with my son one evening and just uh, several fights was going on and uh, just we didn't know why it was going on. So uh, I went home that night and just prayed about it and God had put something on my heart to start a basketball ministry because I knew some of the youth anyway through my son and I played basketball all through school. So it was somewhere I could relate to them at. And um, so God kind of just put on my heart a basketball ministry. So I went to my dad, because at that, at that point in time, I was a, a very new Christian. Um, mm -hmm. Just gave my life to Christ probably three months before that. Okay. So I went to my dad. So give, give me a time frame. What, what, yeah. About when was this, what year? Let's see, our first year up there would have been uh, 2015. Okay, all right. And uh, so I went to my dad because my dad was always uh, the the person I went to um, for dad. prayer, Bible, whatever. Dads are good at that. They are. Yeah. And uh, I was telling him, man, somebody really needs to start something up there at the park. And he said, yeah, I think you should go ahead and do it. <laughs> and I said, no, not me. You know, some, somebody needs to. Um, so I went, and that was on a Sunday morning. So I went to church that morning and was talking to my pastor, Howie. And I said, Howie, somebody needs to start a basketball ministry up here at this park. He's like, yeah, you should go ahead and start it. And again, I was no, not me, <laughs> you know, somebody that's more qualified. And Howie always tells me, you know, he doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. It's true. And um, so about three weeks from that moment, I was like, okay, this is confirmation, <laughs> you know, so I was trying to put it off because I did not know what I was doing. So we just went up there um, by faith that first Sunday and we had 10 or 15 kids and now we've grown into about 85 or 90. Um, it's just a, a safe place that they can come hang out at, they can play basketball. Uh, in the future, hopefully starting next summer, we're looking to add some things like maybe a sand volleyball court or some pickleball courts where it's not just guys playing basketball. 
but that we can reach um, youth in general. Yeah, and if they, so if they don't like basketball, they can still come do something. Absolutely. Right, yeah. So now is this, um, so I, I, you told us how it started, David. Now is this now sponsored by any of the churches or what uh, What connection do you have? I mean, you know, what, What? I mean, or is this just something you dreamed up and is, are doing or how does all that work? Yes, um, we are in the process of becoming a nonprofit. We're not, okay. we're not yet. Um, however, like my church, um, Impact Church, really helps us out a lot. Um, Byers Avenue Methodist Church allows us to use their gym on Sunday nights during the winter time. Um, and Brian and Melissa Glades, the, through Glades Law, they help us out tremendously. And so does Dr. Barnes over there. So we, we do get, and we get a lot of help from the community if there's a need. Um, like say, it's so hot out and the, we're just needing some cases of water like I'll post something on Facebook and we'll have, I mean, before you know it, there'll be eight or nine cases of water brought right. up there. Right. So we have a lot of community support. Good. Well, I, I would imagine that when the word starts spreading and especially by the people who take part in the ministry themselves, yeah. that that word, you know, that, they, that the kids are feeling safe and they've got a place to belong and they do all that stuff, that that all, that kind of sells itself in a lot of ways. It does. And we just want the youth to know that that they do have a place they can come, they can talk to to us if they need to talk. Um, every Sunday evening we get in a circle and pray together, do a little devotion together. And, and for some, that's the only church they ever get. Um, but we want them to know that it is a safe place, that, that we don't allow fights up there, we don't allow drugs up there, that it's a safe place you can just come hang out and, and be a part of, part of it. We don't um, allow bullying up there, none of that. So. We just want them to know that we're there, and, uh, and no. it doesn't cost anything. Right, right. Um, and I, I'm sure that you've got other folks and you know other rules and regulations for the staff as well. I'm, I'm trusting. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, for example, if um, if one of the the female teens needs to talk, then that's where Susan or Lisa will come in and and talk with them. You know, and and um, and of course, if there was an altercation to break out, the the Two lady leaders know not to put themselves in the middle of it. Let let me handle it, or let you know some of the guys up there handle it. So there are there are pla things in in place up there to to keep everybody safe. And uh, well, and you guys as, as ministers too. I mean, you know, you guys have got yeah. to be safe too, and making sure that you know that uh, you don't take any unnecessary you know uh, precaution or you know some uh, any unnecessary chances with your own reputations or lives and all those kinds of things sure. too so all those things are you know that stuff's important absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely and uh, you know like a couple of years back we, we took a couple of them to a, a concert um, but you know like for every kid there was two adults you know right so um, but we try to get them involved in things in the community as well. Um, so one of them actually just um, got offered a job at the juvenile center where I'm uh, the chaplain at now. Okay. So we try to help them not just up there playing basketball, but to be successful in life, not just you know a place to hang out. But sure. we want them to get get the grades, get you know do good in school, and anything that we can do to help, we will. Well, I, I've often said, you know, some of some of my best work as a campus minister has always been coaching, yeah. you know, life coaching. You yes. know, so you can use ba you can use basketball as the metaphor for that. But I mean, yes. there's so many lessons that can be learned from doing sports, but there's also other lessons that you're learning at the same time while you're doing the sports. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. And and a lot of them, you know, from from the first year we started to where we're at now. You can see a huge attitude change in, mm -hmm. in a lot okay. of them. Um, well, at least for the ones that needed an attitude change. Yeah. Right, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and this year, was it, started, it was like a whole new group of kids. It's like, um, oh, I guess just the, the new era of what would be unity. Some of the kids that started with us now have graduated, so they're they're working full time or going to college, which we love to see that. Sure, I'd love to see them come back, yeah. Yeah, and, and they come back, and when they're here during the summer, they'll stop by and visit and everything, but it's just, uh, it's, it's been an honor to see those um, grow up to where they're at now, and mm -hmm. you know, and, and a couple of them have gotten married now, so it's just, it's been an honor to see that, and a, and a real, 
And, and to be honest, they they bless me more than what I probably could bless them. Oh, yeah. Well, I could have warned you about that going yeah. into the ministry. Uh, <laughs> it always happens that way. You know, we always wind up with uh, receiving more than we give, I think. And, Absolutely. You know, uh, and that's and that truly is a blessing. And so, so some of them have come back and have actually started working with other people in the community and helped start working with your group again. So they're giving back already, even at a fairly young age. They they are, yeah. and uh, it's you know at one story. So my dad passed away um, in December of 2016. Okay. So that uh, this is a story about how much they are just a blessing and. Uh, so that Father's Day would have been the first Father's Day without my dad or my son because um, he was traveling playing AAU basketball. So I didn't want to go to the park that night. You know, the, it works on depression and it's like, well, I don't really want to go. So I went up there and I probably had 12 or 13 Father's Day cards from, from some of these kids. And one of the 14-year-olds the at the time was like, Mr. Dave, you know, I've never been able to give a Father's Day card. He's like, my mom had to help me pick this out. And I mean, just tears, you know, and... and mm -hmm. He'll never know how much that meant to me. <laughs> you know, just a simple card. Yeah. You know, and and that's what I mean by there. Th those kids are such a blessing, and it, and it's a family up there. I mean, it, it really is. Yeah. And that's, that is, I think that's wonderful. I mean, you know, you, there, there are those little moments where you, you know, you, you wonder, yes. is this doing any good or, you know, should I be doing it? And then you have those moments like that where you just, you know, receive the card or 12 Father's Day cards, which I think <laughs> is a great, I just think that's a great thing for you as well, uh, you know, in terms of some of that. Um, because it basically is affirmation that says what you're doing is important. Yes. And it's being noticed by the people that you're trying to serve, which is wonderful. Right. And it, it is often, oftentimes you do want because you don't, you know, you, and it's not the te the teens very rarely give compliments. You you know what I mean, like adults do. But and sometimes it's hard for them to to open up and say, hey, thank you, we appreciate you. Now they do tell us that from from time to time. But but the small little things like that, or or just helping us, um, or helping Susan carry up a case of water when she gets the, I mean, just those little things is how they show that they care, sure. and mm -hmm. and they know, and we know that they care, and. Well, and I always say, uh, I always say this about college students, I mean, they really are living self-absorbed because really they're their project at this point in time. I mean, they yes. have to help grow themselves up or we're in big trouble. Right. And they're in big trouble. So I, I don't mind them being self-absorbed because that's by definition in some ways who they're kind of supposed to be. Right. But those moments when they do notice and those moments when they stop and reflect for a moment and can turn around and say, thank you. Right. Well, then we know we're kind of in some ways doing some things right as well because we're also modeling for them how to be in a relationship and how to express that kind of appreciation from time to time. Right, absolutely, you know? yeah. absolutely. And I'm sure you've thanked them for thanking you because that's, again, yeah. the way it works. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's the way that we do some of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Very often. <laughs> so you've been doing this for about four years now. We just got done with our fourth summer. Fourth anniversary. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Good. Yeah. So uh, in terms of that, um, you, you know, so now you're doing it year round, not just the summer. Correct. Um, so w since we started every year, we've done it in the winter time as well, but just on Sundays. Mm -hmm. During the summer time, we're up there every night. Okay. Um, during the winter time. Um, because now we're getting younger kids in, uh, that want to get involved. So um, now once the winter, like once it starts getting colder outside, we'll go back to the gym. Right. And then um, from five to seven, we'll be um, 14 and under. And then seven to nine, will be like 15 and up. Well, I'm going to get some more details about that from you in a second, but we're sure. going to take a real quick break okay. and we're going to be right back. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN-TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, again, thanks for joining us this morning. My guest, uh, David Durall, uh, from Unity in the Community. It's just a, basically a homegrown basketball mm -hmm. ministry that occurs right here in Joplin. So during the summer, we were talking about uh, the, the fact that, you know, you're kind of up there every night during the summer, and that's at Cunningham. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And, um, what, uh, and, and then during the winter, 
uh, you say that you'll be going back to a gym, and that's the gym at? At Byers Avenue Methodist. Byers Avenue. They're okay. on uh, 18th and Byers, mm -hmm. uh, big church right on the corner. Right. Um, and there we divide it into age groups, so the younger kids can just go have fun at the gym um, without the older kids not wanting to play a game against them. <laughs> well, and again, it, 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 uh, they've got different developmental needs at those ages, and so it's, yes. it's kind of good to split them up and uh, have different you know activities and stuff like that. Because and and I will I'll you know I I can tell you from experience that if you start trying to combine them too much, pretty soon the older ones are going to lose some interest, and you're only going to wind up with the younger ones. So you kind of yes. got to have a different agenda for for both groups, or you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, say if parents wanted to be involved, or thought this is a good thing for their kid, they can just send their kids up. Do you do Absolutely. you do any screening? Do you? I mean, you know, what what do parents you know worry about safety? What do you? How do you? How do you do all that? At the I, mean, gym, I know how we do it at church level, but yeah, I'm just trying to the, I'm trying the, to make sure my, my our viewers know <laughs> you know at the gym itself. Well, like or when we get to or the park. just whenever the park or the gym. Yeah. Well, the park, you know, it's a public park. We don't really don't we can't regulate. You, you know what I mean? Like we can't not allow somebody to be a part of the park right <laughs> the gym we can um and parents are more than welcome to stay why you know they're in fact if they're little ones or littler ones like the 15 and under i encourage the parents to come and see what we're doing to um and to stay yeah. and and maybe Smart move. join in on you know playing basketball or shooting some baskets with their kid or or kicking the soccer ball or you know just being there and being part of it i encourage that um but they uh but absolutely they can they can bring them to the church come back and get them that's fine too they can they can ask us any questions they want our phone number they can i mean we're open books as far as that's concerned um a lot of times i go facebook live while we're there just to show what we're doing to kind of mm -hmm. get the word out more um oftentimes like um glades law or um impact like they'll get pizzas for the night so the the kids can eat while they're there and and things like that yeah neat so this thing has just kind of like you got you know just kind of you you you, you thought it up right there on the moment <coughs> it inspired if you will yeah you know the holy spirit kind of went and yes. uh, and then those other two people right after that did the same thing well yeah you should go do that yeah yes. you should go do that and, 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 and look i was what it's grown into i was so not ready that but yeah. like how he said you know and He's like, well, he doesn't call the qualified, so because uh, I definitely was not and still am not qualified. Um, but you know, the, one of the biggest things I've ran into, um, also being um, the chaplain at the juvenile center here, is I asked some of the kids, "Why are you getting in trouble? Like, what what is going on?" And and the main answer is they're bored. You know, there's mm -hmm. nothing for them to do. Right. Um, and the things that they can do, uh, some of them may not be able to afford to do. So during the summer, we can do this for free for them and they can come out, hang out. A lot of people come out there and don't even play basketball. They just sit on the bleachers and just wanna hang out with their friends. Um, there's oftentimes a big speaker out there that one of the kids brings. So they'll sit and listen to music, um, talk amongst themselves. So it's, it's just a, a safe environment that they can just come and be themselves and hang out. Yeah. Now, do you guys, I'm guessing, do some referrals from time to time if a kid winds up with an issue that, that, that you know, you think is beyond your scope of practice or something, and you kind of refer them on to other... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially if we, um, you know, yes, if they come to us with an issue, then we usually do refer them to somebody else, especially if somebody, if one of the kids ever hears or we hear them mention anything about hurting themselves then we uh we call right away i mean we, that's just something we don't you know play around with um we don't take it as a joke so we take it that very seriously um and we usually call it in right then if, yeah. if we hear it if we hear it right then so yeah. well and again i is you know if the kid and if the kids have got a relationship with you then they know that those are some of the rules you know yes uh yeah. you know that 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 you know you're not going to hold a you know a secret that that could hurt them or hurt somebody else or absolutely whatever those things. yeah 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 absolutely and and that they do know i mean they do know that they can talk to us in confidence and, and but when it comes to certain things like that um or hurting somebody else or anything then yes they know that uh then that will go further than us yeah 
So uh, four years you've been at this, and mm -hmm. you've seen it grow from, you said, 12 or 13 that first night to now around 85. We get a, a good group in the summer, yeah. yeah. And every night, I mean, it's consistent. And Sundays are our biggest nights. Um, but every night, probably 30 to 40. And then Sundays, probably 60 and up. So how many volunteer staff do you all have? I mean, this is interesting because, I mean, you know, you're talking about three you guys are doing this every <laughs> night. <laughs> oh, every night? Um, usually through the week, it's uh, a lot of times just Susan and I. Um, and then uh, she volunteers a lot at, or I'm sorry, she works at a dance studio as well um, and her kids. So sometimes it's just me. Um, so really that's, we, I'm praying by next summer we'll have some more um, male that want to come up and be a part of this because um, we do need uh, some more male leaders um, and I encourage it I mean I would encourage any any dad or any guy that wants to get involved please let us know now uh, something like that yeah we do um, like a background check screening things like that because so you do hit you you got some of those things in place now too you, you have to I'm mean, you know well, I, mean, I would yeah I, I would hope that you would yes. I, you know I'm just like yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah no absolutely otherwise I'd be otherwise I'd be pulling you aside of the show and saying you need to make sure that you're <laughs> yeah exactly because yes. I mean, again it's it's not it's for the protection of the kids it's yes. for the protection of you all who are doing it yes. it's for the protection of the community Yes, uh, absolutely. We've got to, you know, we, we you know, uh, as I've said to so many ministers through the years, including my own, my own volunteers, we got to up our game. Yes. Because if we don't up our game, we're allowing cracks in the, in the safety net. And if we allow those little, you know, holes that appear in the safety net, people can be at risk. Absolutely. You know, and whether we want them, you know, whether that's our intention or not, it can happen if we're not, if we're not doing those things. Absolutely. So who does the, I mean, you know, so you, you know, you started this thing. So, I mean, I, and I, and I, you know, obviously you're working in conjunction with some lawyers and some you know, churches and stuff, which is mm -hmm. good. But um, do you have a board? Do you have a, I mean, is it anything that organized at this point in time? Well, um, before the end of this year, we will like have the nonprofit set up. So because, yeah. because And then so you then we'll have, have a board, what, yeah. It'll make it easier. I think it's gonna make your life a whole lot simpler. Absolutely. You know, once you get <laughs> that group to, to help you to, to, you know, to put the structure in place to do that. You absolutely, know? And, and we've, we've held off. it's a good thing. Yes, absolutely. I couldn't agree more with that. And, and you know, the past couple of years, we've kind of put it off because we're like, well, you know, is this gonna grow? Is this something we're, going to keep doing and so it's just been growing and um, the kids enjoy it so we're like yeah. okay it's time you know and and uh, now I don't know how many years I'll still be up there <laughs> I'm getting up there in age and now oh, don't age, even but talk <laughs> don't even start with I'll me, be 40 <laughs> so I don't know how many more uh, years I can play basketball with those teens but I may watch from the side and just sit on the benches there you go yeah yeah well I'm basketball was never my game never <laughs> uh, Volleyball, yes, but basketball, oof. So the, you know, the sand volleyball intrigue, you know, did intrigue me. I would I'll have to get my shoulder surgery that. done before I'll be able to do it, but what the heck, it's all good. <laughs> I would enjoy volleyball. I tell you, uh, with the with the weight and age, man, those kids, uh, boy, they run a lot. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just, just wait forgot. until you're almost 60, my friends. <laughs> just wait until you're almost 60. And you'll, you'll then, then you'll really be then you'll be panting a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, in terms of this, so you you will have your five hundred one c three. Your corp and you'd be incorporated by the end of the year and do mm -hmm. all that stuff. So that's good. It makes me feel I'm I'm feeling a little more comfortable for you now yeah. because I, I just know that with those things come you know again uh, help. Yes. And accountability. Yes. And safety and the ability to cross some T's, dot some I's, and the ability to take in some other donations and things like that. So that Correct. if you you know, uh, if you you know, if you if you needed something from somebody, somebody could, you know, do that and feel like they were giving it to a reputable organization because there Correct. is accountability and you know, everybody knows that that's a uh, you know, cleared through, even through the state as a as a tax exempt organization, et cetera, et cetera. I mean yeah. there's just so many things that can happen and so many avenues I think that can be open to you by uh, again, quote, up in that game yeah. uh, in such a way to be able to do that. No, yeah. absolutely. And I think it's going to help us just tremendously doing that. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, for the first probably two years, we just did because I had, had no idea what it even was. And well, yeah, and I, you know, like I say, I had not heard anything of it. And so, like I say, when, when the story came in, I thought, well, let's just go ahead and do this and I'm mean, let's talk about it. Because I, uh, what I think of the beauty of the whole thing, David, is this, is that you had this, 
you know, this homegrown idea, and it's actually turned into something that's 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 been a good benefit for a lot of kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's a blessing. I mean, yeah. that's kind of a blessing from God that basically says, I'm going to take that idea that I helped you probably give you in the first place. Yeah. I'm going to take oh, that idea yeah. and now, you know, now that you know, you, you've helped now and the seed's grown and everything is in a better spot. Um, I just think that, uh, I think it's a win-win for everybody. Um, it's a win for the people who do the ministry and it's certainly a win for the students who do that. Um, so, so where would, I just want to ask you real quick because we're running out of time. Sure. Where would anybody get in touch with you if they wanted to help uh, or if they wanted to help, uh, you know, in any way by maybe volunteering or providing some water or doing all those things? Um, we actually do have a Facebook page. Okay. It's called Unity in the Community. Unity, one word. Um, no, community. it'll be... Oh, with uh, spaces? Yes, uh-huh. Unity in the community, uh -huh. okay. So it'll be All Unity, right. or they can hit us up personally on Facebook, um, David Durall or, or Susan... D-U-R-A-L-L. Uh-huh, yes sir, the second, or Susan Doss, D-O-S-S. -S. -S. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, again, my guest uh, this morning, uh, David Durall, uh, who's with the Unity in the community. And so, uh, basketball ministry, a homegrown basketball ministry here in the Joplin area. So we're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute. Uh, don't go away, and we'll be back for a wrap-up. The dreaded tagged photo. I married the love of my life in October, and when I got home that night, I saw this. Frankly, this is every obese person's worst nightmare. You have no control, none, over what other people post. And up until that day, I'd been very careful about how I presented myself on social media. In fact, I generally only posted photos like this. What's sad is that I haven't always been like this. Confession, I've been a yo-yo dieter for roughly 10 years. When I met this amazing guy three years ago, he didn't care how much I weighed, but he did care about my health. A month after our wedding, I talked to my doctor and my journey began. Here's an honest and usually pretty entertaining look at how I got to bariatric surgery and beyond. Buckle up, check out my blog, Confessions of a Yo-Yo Dieter. Well, again, we thank you for joining us for another Sunday morning for Faith in Our Hometown. Uh, I love it when a, a simple idea, uh, and from a faith perspective, planted by God, suddenly starts growing, and it winds up growing to the point where uh, it's a success in and of itself, uh, because, you know, uh, God planted a seed and watched it to grow. I'm so grateful for ministers like David Durrell in our area who saw a need and stepped in to try to do something. I'm grateful to his dad and his minister for saying, that's a really good idea and I wanted you to get on it. So, um, again, let's let God continue to guide us in some of those simple solutions to some of our problems uh, or our challenges uh, here in our area. It's great when we care about each other and it's great when we give our kids a place to be. So, uh, please um, come back and join us next week for another Sunday morning at Faith in Our Hometown. I hope your Sunday is absolutely blessed and that you have a tremendous day. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.